Why is Doppler a problem for OFDM? In OFDM, we send data on orthogonal subcarriers. So let's start by thinking about what that orthogonality really means. So if we were to send a single tone forever, such as this one here, so here's a sine wave that goes forever, dot, dot, dots meaning forever, then in the frequency domain, that would be a spike, a delta function at the frequency of that waveform. If we were to send at the same time another waveform which went forever at a different frequency, then that would just be another delta function at that frequency. And so we might, for example, have three different tones all being sent forever for an infinite amount of time. If we had those three, we could send those three at the same time. They would be at different frequencies. They would be orthogonal. Now, of course, we don't send signals for an infinite amount of time. We send signals for a finite amount of time. So, for example, let's say we had three signals on different carriers and we're going to send them for an amount of time capital T. And this is what we do in digital communications. In fact, this is what we do in OFDM. So we'll have different data on different subcarriers. Now, what's the effect of shortening the time here instead of going for infinite amount of time? Well, of course, now it's the same as having an infinite time times a square rect function, which cuts off the time. And in the frequency domain, of course, that is giving us these sync functions. So the Fourier transform, of course, of the square is a sync. And so we get these different sync functions at the different frequencies. And I've shown them here with green, black, and red. And of course, in OFDM, they are called orthogonal, although we can see that all three waveforms are overlapping in time. And also, they are overlapping in the frequency domain. So in what sense are they actually orthogonal? Well, it turns out that if we choose them to be separated in this way, where the, the sync functions are separated by 1 divided by t, then in that particular case, 1 on t separation, then in that particular case, these waveforms can be separated out. So even though the waveform in the frequency domain, they occupy all across the band. So the green waveform occupies all across the band. The black one also occupies all across the band and the red one occupies all across the band. Because we've chosen them in this clever way, they can be recovered and extracted from each other, even though they overlap. And how is this done? Well, there's the thing called the matched filter. And for more information on the match filter, check out the description below. You'll find links to other videos on the channel. Also, you'll find links for OFDM videos explaining in more detail the actual process of OFDM. But let's come back to why Doppler is important. And for that, we need to think about what goes on in the receiver. In the receiver, there's effectively a bank of match filters, one for each of the subcarriers. And it's the output of these match filters where we see the orthogonality. Some people think the orthogonality is a result of the fact that the peak here lines up with a zero from all of the neighboring subcarriers. But it's actually the other way around. The fact that that lines up is because it's orthogonal. And it's in the time domain that you see the orthogonality. These waveforms, which are one on T separated, you can see that the integral, if you multiply these two waveforms together, which is what happens in the match filter, uh, if you multiply them together and integrate over t, you will get zero. And so therefore, the output of the green match filter will have no component from the black and also no component from the red, which is in the received signal. So we need to ask about Doppler and we think, well, what's going to happen if those matched filters have the wrong frequency? because the received signal has all been shifted. And that's what happens with a Doppler shift. What will happen then is the received match, the match filter for the green waveform will not be matched to the green waveform because the green waveform will be coming at a shifted frequency. So this in the frequency domain, this whole green picture here will have shift. If, if, it's, if it's a Doppler shift to a higher frequency, 
all of the uh, subcarriers here across all of the band will be shifted up to the right. So if we take an extreme case, if the shift in frequency delta f equals 1 divided by t, then we can see that the output from each of these match filters will be giving us then the full output from the neighboring subchannel because these pictures here would all shift to the right by 1 on t and then what we would expect to be getting out of the black matched filter for the black subchannel would now be getting the green output because it would be the green waveform after shifting up it would be the green waveform instead of coming on this frequency here it would now be coming on this frequency here because of a shift in frequency. So if you had a exactly Doppler shift of 1 on t, then you would still have orthogonal outputs. It would just be that they would all be shifted one subcarrier to the right if it's a Doppler shift that's positive. Of course, if it's a negative Doppler shift, it would be one to the left. So what happens now if we think about it being a fraction of 1 on t? Now we're going to see that we're actually going to be getting outputs from all of the subcarriers because it's not just that the waveform won't be orthogonal to the subcarrier next to it, it won't be orthogonal anymore to all of the subcarriers. So the important thing about Doppler for OFDM is that even a slight shift of Doppler will mean that none of the subcarriers are orthogonal anymore. And then in each subcarrier, there will be interference from all the other subcarriers. And that's the important thing for OFDM. It's not simply that you get interference from your neighboring subcarrier, it's that you get interference from all the subcarriers. And you can see that when you look at this picture and you realize that each of the subcarriers is actually occupying all of the frequency spectrum. It's not simply limited to a narrow range either side of its subcarrier center value. You can see the green waveform occupies all frequencies, the black and red and so on. They are only orthogonal if the match filters are exactly matched in frequency and Doppler destroys that orthogonality. So if this video has been helpful, hit the like button, helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below. You'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I'm on a search to find signals in everyday life.